that she's going to bake while you're learning how to do your sourdough starter, and once you use it, how to, how to pr prepare it for the next starter. Awesome. Yeah, it's going to be here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Also, you can give your tithes and offerings online at myrichchurch.org. Go to the giving tab. We've got our kiosk in the back. We've got our basket up here. The, the, um, uh, uh, the nativity is gone, so nobody's staring at the basket to make you feel bad. We never feel bad. We never feel bad. Don't ever feel bad about giving to the Lord. No, amen. But there was a, one of the most famous givers in the entire Bible was a little widow woman That's who right. only had a half a penny to give. It was all she had. She put it in. And Jesus said she'll be remembered all through history for what she did over with all the people going around parading with their big offerings. Oh, yeah. Amen. Come on, you give as the Lord puts it in your heart. We give our tithes and offerings. I, I told Kathy, I said, so my checks are in there. And she said, yeah, so we can give our tithe today. Yes, we get to give our tithe to the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. We love to tithe. Yeah. You know, I wasn't always like that. I wasn't always like that. I wasn't right, always right. loving to tithe. Because right. I thought, well, I worked hard for that money. Right. <laughs> they want how much? <laughs> and then I was, I, was, I, was, I was reading somewhere, you know, um, we... The Lord only asks for 10%. That's less than most governments. Right. Praise the Lord. Come on. And God is the only one who promises to give it back to you. Amen. Press down, shake it together, running over. He says, men will give unto you. So when you give to the Lord, expect him to give back to you. Amen. Expect him to cause your money to last longer, your cars to last longer, your appliances right. to last longer. Expect everything to last longer. And expect right. people to be giving you things as a surprise. Just come on. Just expect that when you give, Amen. God is a better giver than you are. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Um, he, he, loves he loves you. He's going to one-up you. That's right. He's going to one-up you every time. Come on, I, I heard about, I heard about a, a lady, she wanted, she prayed, she said, Lord, I want to give you a million dollars. And the Lord, she said, if, you, if, you, if, if I get a million dollars, I'm going to give it to you. And so after, after praying about it for a while, someone gave her a million dollars, so she gave, it to the, she gave it to the Lord through the local church. Because that's where you give it, not at the yes. casino. Right. Because <laughs> the casino doesn't promise to give you anything bad. Yeah. Yeah. God, God, I mean, you're not gambling when you give to God. No. You're investing. Right. And you're doing what God tells you to do. You can't go wrong. She got right. So then she got another million. And so she gave it. Because right. she, she said, Lord, I told, you, I told you if you gave me a million dollars, I was going to give it to you. So the next time someone gave her two million, she kept it. Because it wasn't a million. She kept, no, she kept one million. She kept one million. Anyway, and then they gave the other million, yeah. Praise God. Come on. You can't outgive God. No. Come on. You, you, you just cannot outgive God. Okay, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We ask that you would, you would speak to us and that you would enlighten us, that you would encourage us, that you would, you, would, you would strengthen our faith and our belief in you so that we would do the things that you've called us to do. We thank you for it right now, Father. We thank you that we have ears to hear. And our hearts are open. And I pray that you would give me boldness to preach your word in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, you always ought to be praying for your pastor Amen. to have boldness to preach the word of God as he ought to. Yes. That's what Paul the Apostle said. He said, pray that I would have boldness to preach the word of God as I ought to. Amen. And so this is, this is I'm going to tell you, this is, this is week one of us stepping it up. Amen. Come on, we're, we're around here. We're, we, we have we have we have all we've been talking. We're stepping up. Amen. Come on, we're stepping up. We want you to step up. We expect the church to step up. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Romans one seventeen. Romans one seventeen. Hallelujah. For in it the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by what they see, no. what they feel. No, no. no by faith. Amen. By faith. I, one of my favorite scenes in a, in a movie is the, the movie The Santa Claus, the first one. If you, you ever saw it, and, and Tim Allen is, is Scott Calvin, who's Santa Claus, and he's at the, the North Pole, and he's looking out the window, and he says, you know, I see it. I just don't believe it. And she said, she said, seeing isn't believing. Believing is seeing. Yeah. Right. 
Children have never seen it, but they believe. Jesus, when talking to the disciples, he, he, he'd been crucified and he came back and he went to the disciples and, and Thomas wasn't there. And Thomas said, unless I see with my, my own hands and feel, when I see with my own eyes and feel with my own hands, the holes in his hands and his side, I will not believe. And Jesus, Jesus appeared to Thomas and showed him, he said, blessed are those who have not seen, yet believe. Amen. Believing is the most important thing a believer, because what are, what are Christians? Believers. We're believers. Why are we called believers? Believe. Because we believe in God. Amen. We believe the word of God. Amen. We believe that what God said is true. The just shall live by faith. Now that is not the only place that you are going to find that scripture. The first place you're going to find it is Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. You don't need to go to these. It's also uh, uh, where, where in Habakkuk, uh, the, the just shall live by faith. Uh, Galatians 3.11, the just shall live by faith or the righteous live by faith. Hebrews 10.38, that, that they shall live by faith. They shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Are you just? Well, I don't know if I'm just. You are just. That's right. If you called on Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have been justified in the eyes of God. You are the very righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are just. Yes. So I don't feel very just. Well, stop saying you don't feel very just and start confessing, I'm just. Amen. I'm just. I'm, just. Yes. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Come on, you might, listen, the first time you say it, you're going to be like, oh, that's pride. We can't do that. No, listen, do you want to know what pride is? Saying that you're not righteous. Do you know why? Because that, that disagrees with what God says about you. Anytime you lift up your feelings and your opinions higher than what the word of God says about you, that's pride. It is not pride. It's actually humility to agree with God and what he says about you. There you go. Right? Boom. Boom. Mic drop. No, because you know, mics are expensive. Don't drop the mic. The just shall live by faith. Listen, faith is not a doctrinal issue. Well, you know, this is a faith church. This is a, what kind of church would you be if you're not a faith church? You're going to be a doubt and unbelief church? Come on, listen. This is a faith church. Why? Because we believe the word of God. That's what faith is. Faith is believing. Faith is not a movement that was started in the 1950s. Right. It's not a movement that was that was that was hammered to a to to a to a church wall by Martin Luther. Speaking of which, tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Great man of God. Amen. It's interesting. How few people realize that Martin Luther King Jr. was first and foremost a pastor. Yes. A pastor. An outspoken pastor. Yes. Come on. It is not merely a creed. Faith is a way of life. Right. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of believing. It's a way of being. Obviously, it is a way of speaking. Because when you believe something, you're going to say it. Yeah. When you say, I believe I'll go to the store today, what are you saying? You believe you're going to the store today. What are you going to do? You're going to go to the store. Amen. I believe we'll go for Thai for lunch today. Because I heard someone say we're going to go for, to Thai for lunch today. Are we? I, I, we are. Do you want to come with us? Okay. <laughs> Listen, we, <laughs> faith is a way of living, it is, it is a way of responding to every situation that comes up in life. Yeah. You're either going to respond to situations in faith or in fear. That's right. yeah. Someone, the doctor says you've got six months to live. What is your response? Listen, you might actually only live for another six months, but what is your response to the situation? Faith. The Lord says, I'm the healed of God. Jesus went around healing all who were sick and oppressed of the devil. By the stripes on Jesus' back, I was healed. Listen, if you can get over into faith outside of fear and walk away from fear, that faith that you walk in is going to give you the strength to get through the next six months, and then the next six months, and then, the, come on, the next six months. And then the doctors are going to say, we don't understand how you're still around. 
And they're going to run more tests. And they're going to say, well, we were wrong. You're healed. That's right. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Oh. Faith is the only way to deal successfully with every issue that comes up in life. And the reason why is because God lives by faith. God is the God of faith. It's how he functions. Our Heavenly Father functions through faith. Amen. I like what my dad said. My dad said, if God contradicted himself, he'd be a liar because then he would change what he'd already said. Right. Come on. That's good. It's a lie to change what God says. God's not a liar. No. So it's a lie to contradict what God says. Come on. Just like I said a few minutes ago. It's pride to lie against the Word of God. Amen. Faith is our response. If we see it written in the Word of God, then we're going to just start believing it. Well, the pastor, I read Job and all these things. Come on, you need to get out of Job. Job didn't even have a covenant with God. Right. Job wasn't born again. Job didn't have the Holy Spirit. Job was a man of fear and not of faith. How do I know that? Because he says in his own words, that which I greatly fear has happened to me. Can God protect you when you walk away from him and start living in fear? No. 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 Does he want to? Yes. yes. But he can't make us live by faith. Free will. We have a free will, honey. Hebrews 11.3 says, through faith we understand that the world's were framed by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. It doesn't, it doesn't say out of things that don't exist, but things that are not visible. I like, I like a little bit of science. You know, there's these things called quarks at the subatomic level, subcellular, beyond what you can see. And there's this theory called string theory that all things are held together by these invisible strings. And that everything that is made is made up of cells that are moving at different velocities. Science can prove that. Did you know what science did when they proved that? They proved this. That all things are made up of things which cannot be seen. And they were spoken into existence by God. Your Father. Your Father. Jesus said when he was getting ready to leave his disciples, he says, I go to my father and your father. Yeah. And his prayer does not exclude you. Right. When he said, I'm going to my father and your father, he has in his mind and in his heart that we are one together with him. Amen. That we are one together and we are one together with the father. God doesn't have a preferential treatment for anybody. He loves everybody equally. God doesn't love, I used to think God likes Kathy better than he likes me. <laughs> then, but because he, everything, every, you think so too? Um, <laughs> because I was always getting corrected. I, you know, I still get corrected. Almost daily he corrects me. But do you know what I love about that? Hebrews 12 says that he corrects those he loves. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now I thought, I'm highly favored and loved of the Lord because I get corrected a lot. Yes. <laughs> Psalm 33, 6 says, By the word of the Lord were all the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. Yes. Everything that was made was made by God speaking. By God's word. Verse 9 of Psalm 33 says, He spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. It means it's solid. It's immovable. It's real. It's tangible. He spoke and the things that he spoke came into existence out of things that you cannot see. Do you know you can start speaking things into your life that you can't see? Yes. That's right. yes. Did you know that the Bible says he knows the number of the hairs on your head? 
So I was talking to him about that. I said, well, you know the, numbers of, the number of the hairs on my head. You know how many have left. <laughs> I said, I want those hairs back. So almost every day I say, thank you, Lord, with that in mind. I say, thank you, Lord, for the, for the, for the number of the hairs on my head that I had in my youth. And then he starts talking to me about the color. I'm like, well, yeah, it should be the color it was then, too. <laughs> right? Come on. Faith, faith speaks every day, I hope she's speaking every day, that her eyes are whole and perfect with perfect sight. Because we've, we've, been, we've been reading through the Bible as a family. And do you know that Jesus never said no to anybody who wanted to be healed and came to him in faith? I mean, he touched, he touched the leper. He, he put spit in, the, in, the, in, the, in, a, in a mute man's mouth. Oh, you try doing that now in churches. And that's like, oh, you're just, blah, 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 that's unsanitary. You can't do that. I'm calling OSHA. <laughs> Go for it. Because if, if, if I do it and you don't get healed, I was wrong. If I do it and you get healed, God was right. Amen. 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 You speak. How did all this come into existence? By faith. Faith is how the Father functions. He doesn't function in any fear or doubt or unbelief that what he has said is going to happen will happen. That's right. When he looked at you, listen, when he looked at you, he looked at you in faith and said, I see you, not as you see you. That's right. I see you in Christ. I see you in my son. I see you as the very righteousness of myself. That's what he looks when he sees you. He doesn't see you broken and, and falling apart. He has faith. He is faith. He knows and has faith and he what listen, what he says will happen. That's right, Pastor. When he said, let there be light, there was light. It doesn't say and then there was darkness and God had to hover around waiting for light to come. God does everything by faith. Everything that he does is done completely by faith. And, and the, all the time, everything he's doing concerning us is of faith. Everything that we are to do for ourselves needs to be of faith. We, we looked at this, this prayer this morning, John chapter 17, when he prayed that we would all be one. Jesus had no doubt that we would be one. One with each other, one with him, one with the Father. Jesus is not coming for a broken down, dirty church. No. Paul says he's coming for a glorious church Amen. without spot or wrinkle or any such blemish. Hallelujah. I think sickness and disease and poverty are blemish. Yes. They're spot. God's coming for an overcoming, victorious church. I had a vision uh, as a little over a year ago, and I, and I saw, I saw the church glorious. Amen. I saw us with our glorified bodies walking on the earth. Tall, beautiful, glorious, shining, glorious church. And everybody who was not part of the church was envious that they had not been a part of the church. It is never too late until it's too late right. to come into the church. <clears throat> Jesus' prayer in John 17 is a prayer of faith. And it is happening. And it will happen. And before it's all said and done, we are going to be the glorious church without yeah, spot or wrinkle. Amen. In fact, not only are we going to be, we are. We are. Come on, say it with me. We are, we are the glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such blemish. Come on, hallelujah. Say it and believe it. We are the glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such blemish. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. Listen, 
One way that that is going to happen is when we allow, because in reading in context in Ephesians chapter 4, the, the ministry gifts of the apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, and pastor help to unite us and bring us together into the unity of the faith. You can go to evangel evangelistic meetings, you can go to, you can go to a church and, 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 and hear a prophet, but every week you can go to church yes. That's right. and be with a pastor. That's right. And listen, one thing that happens in church that will never happen in your home sitting on your couch, one thing that will happen, you will become stronger, more united, yes. more equipped yes. to face the world as a glorious church, yes. if you're in church. Amen. I love Sean. I don't know how you say his last name. Few. 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 I, I love him. He posted this morning on, on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, go to church. <laughs> go to church. No matter what anybody says. That's right. Come on. It doesn't matter what anybody says or anybody tries to get you to do or tries to get you in fear. Oh, you shouldn't go there. You shouldn't do that. This or that. Come on. No, you ought to. Yeah, that's right. That's Hebrews right. 10.38 says, go to church. That's right. Because it's going to be the habit of many in the end times not to. That's right. So go to church. Right. I'm going to tell you. No, I'm not going to go there. One of the most important places you can be is church. Yes. Right. When God looks at us, he doesn't see us as we are now the way we see us when we look in the mirror and when we're going through our mind thinking the things that we've done wrong. Right. He doesn't look at us and say, oh, you messy mess. Oh, you sorry old messy thing, you. He no, me. he loves you. Amen. And he sees you through the eye of faith the way that he sees you and knows you to be. Yes. He sees you glorified. He sees you walking in faith and victory. Amen. Not one place in the entire Bible where you ever find that God calls his, his, his followers, his, his people, Israel or, or anybody else, the church, to be, to be overcome. No. In this you will always be overcome. No. Nope. In this you will always be a victor. Yes. Amen. In all things, all things through Christ Jesus, you will be victorious. That's right. Amen. All things. Amen. All things. In all things leaves no room for anything not to be part of all things. All things. All things are possible to them who believe. Yes? Yes. yes. If Jesus said all things are possible to him who <laughs> believes, does that leave room for that all things not to mean all things? No. No. If you're believing God, all things are possible to you. Right. Yes. Come on. All things. Everything. All things. Everything. If, he did, if, Jesus, if God looked at us, and, and, and said, you old messy mess thing, you. Do you know what you would never, never stop being? Messy mess. Yes. Messy mess. But God never once calls you an old messy mess. Right. He, Paul, by, by revelation of the, of the Holy Spirit, said, he said, you once were aliens, alienated from God, but now you have come near and you're children of God. Listen, my son is the most one, one of the most wonderful people in the whole wide world. But his room. It's not just you. We're in the same boat here. We're all in the same boat here, right? Listen. God didn't call us an old messy mess room. He called us his son, That's his right. daughter, That's whom right. he loves, the wonderful one, the compassionate one. My children are the two of the most wonderful people in the whole wide world. Yeah. My wife, they don't get any better. That's right. Let me say this again. God calls us how he sees us by faith. That's good. He does. God calls us how he sees us by faith. Jesus. Huh? Gideon's a good example. Gideon's a good example of that? Yeah, Gideon's a great example of that. David's a good example of that. Abraham's a good example of that. Moses is a good example of that. All of these people, they were all 
if you look at them in the natural, they are one hot mess. They are one, they, they are one hot mess. <laughs> Abraham decides he's going to fulfill God's will by sleeping around. David, 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 he, he, he's going to go sleep around. Come on. Gideon, Gideon, well, I don't, I just don't believe you really called me. So, so if this fleece is wet and the ground is dry, then okay. Well, I still don't believe it. So if the fleece is, if the fleece is wet and the ground is dry, well, okay, you must be calling me. Come on. Saul. Let's see, Saul was a hot mess too, wasn't he? The Apostle Paul, he had letters to go out and kill the church. And Jesus stops him on the road to Damascus. I've seen the road to Damascus. I've been in Israel. I want to go again. And we were on this mountaintop looking down. And the, the guy says, see that, that, that narrow stretch of, of line over there? He said, that's the road to Damascus in Syria. That's the road that Paul the Apostle was on when Jesus visited him and said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? See, listen, when Jesus said that we would be one with him and one with God, when he meant it, because he said, Saul, why are you, he didn't say, why are you persecuting my church? Why are, you, why are you persecuting the Jewish believers in Jerusalem? He didn't say that. He said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul said, Lord, who are you? <laughs> and that changed his entire life. Okay. The scripture says concerning Abraham in Romans 4.17 that God calls those things that are not as though they were. That's right. God calls those things that are not as though they were. So when God looks at you, he calls you by the gift and the grace and the, the, the plan that he has for you. I remember we, we, when we went to, to Ramah, um, it's, it's a cute story. Kathy and I were dating, and my parents had this living room that had, like, the, the house was like a sunken living room. I'm so glad that they just don't make those anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, one more obstacle while walking through the house. And so I was walking through the house, and I, I stepped down from the entryway into the living room, and I knew in my heart we were I was supposed to go to Tulsa. And in knowing that I was supposed to go to Tulsa, I knew that we were supposed to go to Ramah. Because I didn't know anything about Tulsa except Ramah. Ramah Bible Training Center, Candidate Ministries. And so I started laughing. I mean, I just got so much joy on the inside of me that God had given me a plan. He'd given me a destination. And then we went, to, we went there and we didn't, have, we, we didn't plan anything at all. We got there and they said, they said, now, you know, people will come every year and they don't have a job and they don't have money and they don't have, they don't have a place to live. And we tell you, don't come here like that. Well, we came there like that. We didn't, we didn't exactly, we didn't exactly that. We didn't have a plan or anything. We, we had an apartment that we reserved, but we didn't have jobs. We didn't have hardly very much money at all. We hadn't even looked into what tuitions were or anything like that. We just knew that God called us to go there. And I have a lot of funny stories about getting there. So we, we, we get there, and, and, and uh, Kathy has, has gone. She's part of this, this hospital visitation kind of group. And she went out, and I was home, and I was praying. And the Lord said, I've called you to be a pastor. Do you know what I did? I cried. I cried. I didn't want to be a pastor. I wanted to be Benny Hinn. I ran from the call from being a pastor for so many years. And the whole time I'm running from the call to be a pastor, I'm working in churches next to the pastor. And the whole time I'm watching what pastors do. And I'm learning, I'm learning the good things that pastors do and the wrong things that pastors do. And I like to say, I learned more about being a pastor by learning what not to do than what to do. But you know what I never saw any of them do? Take a church through a pandemic. Come on. Faith is the method that we live by. I became, I, we, went to, we went to Ramah by faith. We, we went through the pastor's group by faith. We moved back by faith. 
I, every step of the way, I mean, when we got to Ramah, by faith, we went to church the first Sunday, and a couple of ladies prayed for us. And they said, well, what do you need prayer for? We said, we need jobs. So they just stood there. Come here. They just stood there. So we're, we're, we're standing there, and we've got our hands up, and they're, they're just doing this. Jobs, 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 jobs. And Jesus, we're like, yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. And the next week, we both had good jobs. Come on. By faith. By faith. You don't have to pray long prayers. Oh, precious Lord in heaven, whom I love. And blah, 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 blah. Well, come on, listen. You want to do that. You want to come with him and come to him by faith. And you want to worship him. You know, I was thinking this morning, you know, worship songs and stuff like that. And, and I was thinking about one experience we had. We were doing a home Bible study kind of thing. And this lady says, oh, the word that you preach is really good. She said, but I just need more worship. Well, what's it really about then? If you just need more worship, or you just need this kind of music, or then who, who are you really worshiping? Right. No, I'm not going to drop the mic. They're expensive. Well. No, I'm not going to drop the phone mic. Faith is how the Father functions, how he operates, how he creates, how everything he does is victorious and overcoming. When God created the heavens and the earth, that's victorious. He overcame the deep and the darkness that was on the earth and the void that was there. Listen, you might have deep darkness and void in your heart, but God wants to speak life over you. Amen. God is declaring, and I'm declaring right now through the, through the word of the Lord. That darkness, speak to that darkness and tell it to go. Tell it to become light. Put your hand on your tummy. I declare you are light. You are not darkness, but you are light. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, that was for somebody. That just came on real strong. That was... Come on, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for, this, for your Holy Spirit. Oh, I'm so grateful for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm so grateful for the Holy Ghost. He helps us in everything. Yes. Oh, he causes us to be overcomers in everything. Yes. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Yes. Ephesians 5.1, Paul writes to us, and he says, Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Right. Imitate God. What have we been saying God is? How does God operate through faith. So if he tells us to imitate God, what is he wanting us to do? Faithful. The just shall live by faith. Amen. Every moment of every day, we are to be doing everything in faith. I'm telling you, every decision you make, blinking your eyes, inhaling, you just, you are, you are living by faith. Amen. Your decisions are made by faith. Amen. I was talking with somebody and, and we were we were talking, I don't remember who it was, we we're, were talking about how that, you know, you, you, you do the best to make the right decision, and you make the decision, and you believe by faith that the decision you've made is the decision God wants you to make. And I guarantee you, if you make the wrong decision, but you made it by faith, God will correct you. Right. He'll get it fixed. He'll get you going in the right direction. Why? Because you're living by faith. We hear things and see things by faith through the Spirit. When we do that, it's going to stir you up. I'm going to tell you, it stirs me up that God wants to take somebody who's feeling like they're just dark. And it just feels like, like there's a dark pit inside of you. And that nothing's going to fix it. And you just don't know what's wrong. But God is speaking life to that. God is speaking light to that situation. Just by faith, I reach out and I, I'm telling you, you are loved. I don't know. I don't know if it's somebody here or if it's somebody watching. You are loved. God loves you. Receive His love. You're not a mess. No. 
your life is not unfixable. Amen. God loves you. Amen. Turn it over to him. Amen. Listen, living like this is going to inspire you to do more. Yeah. To expect more. Amen. God wants more for you. Yes. Amen. Faith isn't a movement that was started by a man. Faith is what God is. God exists in faith. Listen, Jesus is coming. Yes, yes, yes. He's returning for a glorious church. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Keep Hebrews 11. Let's look at Hebrews 11. I don't know why that keeps doing that. I don't like that. A new update on my iPad. Hebrews 11. Three. Hebrews 11, 3 says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained the witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and through it being still dead, being dead, still speaks. Did you know that your act of faith in giving to God will speak long after your life here on earth is gone. The things that you do by faith will continue to live on. Verse 5, by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see faith and, it was, and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Listen, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Abraham, Enoch, it says he walked with God, and he pleased God, and he was taken up. Charles Capps used to say this. He said, you're going to have to receive the rapture. I think Brother Hagin said it too. The rapture is going to be one of those promises you have to receive by faith. Like healing. If you want healing for your body, God's not going to force it on you. You have to receive it by faith. Enoch was raptured because he pleased God by his faith. He was taken away and was no more. Enoch is one of the most commonly used references when referring to the rapture. It was by faith. Abraham, Noah built the ark by faith. He, he, nobody had ever built a giant ship before. Flood? What's a flood? Rain? What's rain? What do you mean the ground is going to open up? God can be telling you some things, and you're like, I don't understand that. But the same way that Abraham went to a land that he didn't know, and he was the friend of God because he walked with, by faith with God. That's right. That's right. Amen. It's going to take faith to do some things. Right. It's going to take walking with God. I'm not saying this is a definitive. But if, if Enoch was raptured because of his faith, then maybe the rapture is for those who are of faith. That's right. I tell you what, I don't care what anybody else says, I hold fast to the rapture. Amen. I hold fast to it. Yes. Because if it's a promise from God, I'm going to hold on to it. Amen. And I, I like, I like what, what Joseph Morris says on, on he's, he's a, you, should, you should look him up, he's got end of days updates on, on YouTube. You, are you familiar with him? Yeah. Yeah. I, I post his stuff on my Facebook page occasionally. He says, he says, the rapture is not an escape theology. It's an excelling theology. Where suddenly you're going to excel as a believer. You're going to be glorified. And then you're going to be what God has always called you to be. Amen. And you'll see the result of faith that he has put in your heart. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, I just love you so much. Yes. Oh, we love you so much, Lord. We are so grateful for you. Oh, Jesus. And if there's anybody here in the sound of my voice and you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, 
By faith, you can do that right now. Yes. And just say with me, Jesus, I make you my Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Help me to live for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We love you. God loves you. Get in church. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Don't forget, Friday and Friday at 10 is prayer. Not 10-ish, but 10. <laughs> right? And Saturday at 10.30 is the Sourdough Club. Make sure you give us, let us know if you're going to be here. Because we, um, Deb is going to bring sourdough starters for everybody who comes. And you don't want to not have a sourdough starter. Right? Right. Okay. Praise God. God bless you. We'll see you later.